hi, thank you for coming to talk to me. Could That's you just tell me about, tell me who you are and where you come from? Okay, I'm Trudy Newton and I'm from the UK. I live in the country, in a village in Suffolk, which is part of East Anglia, um, about 100k northeast of London, and I'm an educational TSTA. Lovely, thank you. And, um, and how long have you been involved in TA? Do you know, it must be almost exactly 30 years since I did a 101. I did a 101 in 86, and for a few years before that, I'd been reading TA books and sharing them with other people. So we actually had, in, in the village where we, where we still live, uh, we had a, a kind of self-help group based on TA, where we, none of us had done a 101 or anything else, but we just read TA books and talked to each other about them, shared ideas and did exercises from born to win. And eventually I thought, I'd like to know more about this. So I did a 101 in So a little hub of TA in uh, Yeah, there in is East indeed. Anglia There's growing. a little hub of TA in East Anglia, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. interesting. And yeah. where did you do your 101? I did my 101 with Lily Stewart in, I think it was called the South London TA Centre or something like that, um, in Blackheath. But Lily gave up being a trainer quite a while ago. Um, and I went on to, to start my training with Lily. And I'm very grateful to her. She was a very inspiring trainer. Uh, but after a while I decided that I'd been counselling for years and I'd been a social worker for years and I, I really wanted to change, I wanted to get back into education. So I decided to qualify in education yeah. rather than anything else. And tell me a bit about what you're passionate about in your life. Obviously TA is one passion but tell yeah, me Yeah it is, it's quite a big passion actually. Um, and it combines very well with another one which is travelling and not travelling as a tourist. I don't like just going to look at stuff and going around and taking photographs. What, what I really enjoy, and, and David too, we, we like doing it together, is actually being in a place um, and living there and you know, being with people who live there. And that usually works very well with doing some TA input or whatever, um, and actually getting to know the country as well. So travel I've always loved for various reasons and yes. various different ways. And combining travel and TA sounds it's like great. a good... It's great. It's really great. <laughs> it's like goal. having a family all over the world, really. Yeah. So, you know, there's always somebody that we can make contact with. Yeah. So we do quite a bit of... I do quite a bit of travelling for, you know, connected with TA and okay. other things as well. Um, and uh, I, I suppose I am passionate about learning. I really enjoy the learning process and putting ideas together uh, a lot of the ideas that I use uh, when I'm working are, are not originally TA ideas. They're things that I've thought, oh wow, that's fantastic, and, and how can I relate that to TA theories that I'm interested in? So, yeah. And so you like ideas, and I wonder if you've got any, yeah. any new ideas that you're thinking about in terms, of, in terms of TA at the moment. Yeah, well, it's funny you should ask that. Um, we were talking last night over dinner, a group of us were talking about what bits of TA we're really thinking of developing further and what's, what's our next step in writing or developing new workshops or something. And I was talking then about a book that I'm reading by an American professor whose name I cannot remember, sorry, um, it might come, might come to me as we're talking. Um, he's a linguist and he's writing about the difference between plot and story. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he's of Russian or, or East European origin, I'm not sure where, but um, he's really basing this on the distinction that's made in the Slavic languages between story and plot. And we don't really make quite the same distinction in English, although we do have the words. Uh, but just to give you a really simple example, um, a, you know, it's kind of basic story that linguists use. Um, the king died and then the queen died is a story. Yeah. The king died, and then the queen died of grief, is a plot. Okay. Because so you've it's got the, the the underlying motivation and what what's going on at the psychological level is yeah, part so of the plot. Yeah. So rather than just the, just the facts. Rather than just the, the story. facts. Rather than just mm. the what's going on here in this situation. You've got the why is it going on here. And so I'm, I'm thinking, and it really is right at the beginning of my thinking, how we can connect that with script theory. 
And the whole idea of script being a story that we create for ourselves and a narrative that we continue to develop throughout our life. So is it a story or is it a plot? Mm. And when does it move from being one to being the other? Mm. So and as I say, it's really, at the moment, it's an idea which I'm thinking, oh, I bet there's something in that and I'm going to take some time to look at it properly and, and think about it. Lovely. Yeah, it's good, sounds really it? interesting. It is, yes, isn't it? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Using other people's ideas and then integrating yeah. them and how, does, how can that apply to mm -hmm. us? Great. Yeah. What other bits of TA theory do you like or have you been involved in? Um, oh wow, um, that's quite a wide question. Mm. Yeah, I guess the thing that always comes to mind and that people very often talk about um, is the health system. Looking at the positive models that are being developed in TA mm. and moving away from a pathologizing way of using the language, yes. for instance. And so I found that the the model which I it's barely a model really, it's just kind of, it's a pattern of other models um, that I developed about, I suppose, about 10 years ago now. Um, people mention it a lot and how it's changed their thinking or how it's enabled them to change their thinking. Um, so the health system is something that I kind of return to quite a bit and continue to add to. And it's not me, it's other people saying this and we could do that and it doesn't include the other and so it's continually being changed and added to and I like that. Yes, and it's sort of ever evolving, ever developing. Mm. Yeah, Great. yeah. Then that's something that actually that I am passionate about and that's very important to me mm. um, is that ideas are constantly being developed. I mean this is the scientific method where we're never sure yeah. if this is the best we can do for the moment. So we go on developing an idea and getting new data and new information. How do we integrate it? How does it change what we've come up with? And how does that make a difference to what we do? So, so that um, the, the model of the health system is really important to me in that way, that it's, it's something that I put out into the world, but lots of people have had ideas about it. And so it continues to change. And that I really, I really like that, that you know, to, to offer something and, and get a response and, and to continually evaluate and develop rather than saying, this is a model and this, this yeah, is what we're going to use. Yeah, that's how it is. Mm. Mm. And, so. ha and how do you see that, the, the health system being useful in terms of the educational uh, work that you do? Mm. Good question. I think it's really important in terms of looking at, for instance, if we relate it to educating children, looking at a young child's resources rather than what they can't do. Mm. So rather than being continually concerned about criteria for different stages of development, looking at how does this little person operate for themselves? What, what did they notice? What do they build on? Um, and, and I think that that shift in attitude and, and how we can enable that by thinking, for instance, about the winner's triangle rather than the drama triangle or about working styles rather than drivers. Um, I think that's a creative approach right from the beginning. Yeah, so it's focusing on the child's resources and what they're doing mm. well and what they're good at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I just wonder whether in that then it might the, the the bits that they're not doing so well might get missed in that. Do you think that, that they happens? might? They might. Um, but I just want to um, quote a little bit from from somebody else. Uh, I'm very thrilled by the review that Mick Landesh wrote in TAJ of the education book that Giles Barrow and I edited, mm -hmm. which came out beginning of this year. Um, and he's taking the ideas that we're putting forward in that book and saying we really need to apply them to the whole of TA and to look at well-being rather than remedy. And so I think that, of course, we mustn't miss the things that are going wrong. And of course, we mustn't um, be, you know, be um, dismissive of distress or damage or whatever. Of course not. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's no need to pathologise people who are basically doing okay. Yes. Um, and you know, to enable them to use their own resources in order to do better if they want to um, is a better approach than saying, well, you need to get over whatever. Yeah, so, so really impor important to account for those resources and build on those right. resources as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, and from, I'm, 
years ago, I haven't done it for a long time now, but I used to train mental health social workers in, in social care. Um, and this is a, it's a great program actually. I didn't design it, but I took it over from somebody else. And the whole course, we had service users as participants alongside the social workers. And I remember very clearly that one of the things that they used to say was that very often they know what they need and it's not what's being offered. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it's such a simple solution. Mm. Um, and, you know, it can be as simple as an hour a week talking with somebody who's listening just to them. Mm. Um, and so I think, yeah, enabling ourselves to, th to think that way. Lovely. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Is there anything else that you'd like people to know about you? Um, well, one of the things that's very present at the moment is uh, this this conference in Geneva. We're celebrating 40 years of IATA, and just over 40 years ago, David and I were at the graduate school at the World Council of Churches, just outside Geneva. Mm. So coming back, you were here. We were here. <laughs> we were here. Yes, we were here just before. IATA was formed um, and that was a really important time for me because it's where a lot of the ideas that I later took into working in TA began. Um, it's a very a very creative course that we were on. One of the, um, one of the guys who was um, lecturing and well, hardly lecturing, facilitating, um, was Paulo Freire, the Brazilian educator and a lot of the educational work that I did earlier was based on his ideas mm. uh, and and so he's always been a very important presence so it's really great to be here yeah. at approximately the same anniversary time as IATA um, and to think back to those days and and how the journey that I've been on in TA was really connected with ideas that started to develop at that time. Mm. All right that's great thank you very much thanks. Okay it's been a pleasure good to talk to you.